Hello everyone, this is going to be number four in our challenging problem series. We have a system of equations uh, and as you can see here, A and B are parameters, they're given numbers and we're supposed to solve the system. So A and B are not necessarily equal, if they are we're going to take care of that at the end. So in order to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and define uh, some variables here or I should probably call them symmetric polynomials. So what I'm going to define is basically I'm going to call x plus y plus z as sigma 1, xy plus xz plus yz as sigma 2, which is the sum of the two-way products, and the product of the xyz, I'm going to call that sigma 3, okay? And based on this, we can actually go ahead and write all of these equations in terms of sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here. So what I need to do first is write the obvious one, which is x plus y plus z, which I can write as sigma 1. And then, so we, this will be a, basically, right? Okay, so this will be a. And then I do need to be able to write the second equation, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which I can write as sigma 1 squared, which is this one squared, minus... 2 times sigma 2, which is the two-way uh, products, okay? And this is going to give me b squared. As you know, this is my second equation. And the third one, which is x cubed, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, can be written as, okay, can be written as sigma 1 cubed, sigma 1 cubed, which is x plus y plus z cubed minus 3 times x plus y plus z which is sigma 1 times xy plus xz plus yz which is sigma 2 plus 3 times sigma 3 which is xyz if you go ahead and cube x plus y plus z and do some factoring you're going to notice that this actually works and this is equal to a cubed okay so we now have a system of equations in sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. So we're going to go ahead and solve the, uh, the system. First of all, if you go ahead and uh, substitute sigma 1 in the second equation, you're going to be getting, and let me change colors here. So you're going to be getting a squared minus 2 sigma 2 equals b squared. And from here, you're actually going to get, um, for sigma 2, you're going to get the solution as, if I go ahead and subtract b squared and then divide by 2, that's going to give me a squared minus b squared over 2. And then uh, if I go ahead and substitute that into the third equation, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Uh, I'm going to be substituting a for sigma 1, which is a cubed minus 3 times sigma 1, which is a again, right? multiply by sigma 2, which is given as a squared minus b squared divided by 2, plus 3 sigma 3, and that whole thing is going to equal a cubed. Okay? So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go ahead and solve for uh, sigma 3. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression a little bit. Uh, we can actually uh, make a common denominator here. So if we do... Uh, actually, I can actually go ahead and do the following. So go ahead and cancel out the A. Then actually from there, it's, the answer is very easy. I can go ahead and cross out the threes as well. And sigma 3 is going to be equal to A times A squared minus B squared divided by 2. Okay? So I got my uh, all my sigma values. I have the sigma 2 here. I have the sigma 3 here. And I already knew that sigma 1 is equal to A. Okay? So, now how does this help us? Let's go ahead and uh, substitute back what those are. Uh, so, we said that uh, x plus y plus z was sigma 1. So, I'm going to go ahead and write it as x plus y plus z. That's going to equal A as before. And then I'm going to have xy plus xz plus yz, which is equal to sigma 2. But I got sigma 2 as a squared minus b squared divided by 2 which is this one, and then the product xyz, which 
we designate it as sigma 3 is going to equal this expression right here, a times a squared minus b squared all over 2. Okay, so what did I get here? I actually got a system of uh, equations, but uh, what I have is everything is in the first power. So, and this should remind you of something. Uh, we have the sum, we have the sum of the two-way products, and then we have the product. And this should definitely remind you of Vieta. And Vieta tells us that um, you can, if you know the roots, you can go ahead and write down the equation. So we're talking about a cubic equation here whose roots are x, y, and z. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write down the cubic equation whose roots are x, y, z. But let's use a different variable. Let's say, for example, we use u for the main variable. u is going to represent x, y, and z. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the fact that uh, this is going to be uh, the sum of the roots is negative b over a. So their sum is going to be this way. So we're going to be writing it this way. Uh, and then plus we can write a squared minus b squared divided by 2 multiplied by u because this is the xy plus xz plus yz. And then you know that the signs will alternate. And then finally, we're going to write the product with a negative sign. And that's going to give us a times a squared minus b squared divided by 2. And that's just going to equal 0. Okay? So what we did was basically we started here with a system. We defined the symmetric polynomials. And then we use uh, those symmetric polynomials. Actually, we solved for each one of them in terms of a and b. And then they gave us a system of equations. And now we're using... Uh, Vieta, Vieta's theorem. Okay? All right, let's see how this goes. So I do have a cubic equation, and, you know, cubic equations can be quite complicated. There's a cubic formula, which is, you know, fairly compl complicated, and I don't think you want to use that here, especially when there are a lot of extra variables. But here's one thing uh, we can definitely do. If you kind of look at this expression uh, carefully, uh, you're going to notice that u equals a, u equals a, is actually a solution to this equation. How do I know that? Well, if you replace u with a, if you do that, and this is just testing, right? So we're going to be getting a cubed minus a times a squared plus a squared minus b squared divided by 2 multiplied by a. Remember, I'm replacing u with a minus a times a squared minus b squared divided by a. So this is going to be the same as a cubed. This is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. And that's going to be all 0. So that means that u equals a is actually a solution. Meaning that u minus a is actually going to be a factor of this equation. Now, how do you write the other factor? Well, the other factor is supposed to be quadratic, right? And uh, the way you can actually do this is... Uh, you can actually go ahead and group these terms. Let's see if that works. Let me um, erase this and kind of start over here. So let's see how this works. Am I going to be able to uh, factor out? Uh, let's see. I'm going to put these together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm go actually going to um, group these first and third terms together because they're both positive and take out a U there. Let's see how this proceeds. u squared plus, since I took out the u, I should have an a squared minus b squared divided by 2 here. And then these two terms here, they're both negative. So I'm going to pull out a negative sign. And then what they have in common is basically just a. And I already knew that because u minus a is a factor. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be getting the same expression here, which I should be getting. And from here, I get a squared, I'm sorry, u squared because a times u squared plus this was a negative sign so that will be a squared minus b squared over 2 and that equals 0. so what we see here is we see the same term twice so that means u minus a is a factor as we guessed before right and which verified of course then the second factor is going to be u squared minus a squared minus b squared over 2 which is actually fairly easy because this is just missing the term in the middle okay so so far we have the following uh, factors and from here we can actually find the u values we're going to solve for u first and then go to xyz from there but that's easy so let's go ahead and find uh, the roots 
uh, u1 is going to be a obviously from the first factor u2 is going to be if you now go ahead and do the following like set this equal to zero right and then put the thing on the other side it's going to look like this and then square root both sides but when you square root both sides you're going to get a plus minus so you're going to get two solutions under the radical uh, first of which is going to be square root of b squared minus a squared divided by two and the other solution which i will call u3 is going to be the opposite of this okay all right so we found the solutions but what does this mean well u was basically representing xyz so these can be xyz or xzy if you consider all the permutations then you're going to be getting basically six solutions from here okay because they can just go ahead and uh, interchange and you're going to be able to write all the solutions thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please comment and subscribe if you haven't done so and feel free to let me know what you think have a great day see you in the next video